This is a short video to show you how to use the particular charting program we are recommending for use on the online CBCC. Um, there are a number of charting programs you could use to create verticals and horizontal charts, um, but we are recommending one particular one from the SBS in Vila, Switzerland, um, for two particular reasons. Um, one, because it works with Excel um, and Microsoft Word, so it's easy to use but also because it's absolutely free. Um, so let me first show you uh, where you can get this program from. So if you go to sbs-switzerland.ch, this will take you to SBS Vila's website. Um, unless, unless you're fluent in German, I would suggest that you click the English version and this should take you to this, the English version of their website. Now what we're looking for here is the Resources tab. So if you click onto there, and then scroll all the way down to the bottom, and you see this part of this page where it says Tools for SBS Students and Macros for Creating Horizontal and Vertical Charts. And there is a video there if you want to watch that as well for extra help in how to use this. But what we're looking for is this link down here, it says here, and if you click here, then you will download the file that we need. So let's get rid of this. Here's the one I prepared earlier. And this is what you will see. Um, if you ever get stuck by using this program, there are two README files here, one PDF, one text document, which you can, it will get, take you go uh, word by word through the process of how this works. Um, but I'm going to show you briefly now. Um, but you have these here in case you need it. Um, there is a Excel version spreadsheet or an open office version. Um, I'm, I'm going to use the Excel version, but I'm told that the open office one is even easier. So if you are uh, more familiar with open office than you are with uh, Microsoft Office, then feel free to use that instead. Um, I will say on that particular point, though, if you are a Mac user, uh, it's been my experience that most of the problems that, uh, that with this program happen if you're a Mac user using OpenOffice. Um, so if that's your situation, you may need extra help that I cannot offer you, um, but um, or you may need to get Microsoft Office or Mac, or Office 365, which is a very good solution if you don't already have it. But anyway, um, if you just open the Excel document, I don't need that. Now, very important, whenever you open any of these, is to enable macros. If you don't do that, the program will not work. Now, what you'll end up with is an Excel sheet, and as you can see from here, they have already created a program um, for creating horizontal charts and vertical charts for you. So this will take away a lot of the work of actually creating horizontals by hand or using um, uh, some more software by doing it by hand. And this will do it all automatically for you. Um, there's a couple of things that you need to do in this more technical area. Um, to make this work properly. One thing I suggest where it says perverse, if you click on the green box there and change that to 18. Now you don't have to do that, but it just makes life easier for, for, the, um, for the eventual vertical charts you create because there'll be more space for you to write on and it'll be easier for people to read afterwards. The only other thing you need to do in this section is where it says book name. If you just you make sure you type it properly first, Ephesians. Okay, now, don't mess with any of those things because if you do, this program won't work. And where it's these two here, these two columns also don't add anything to these columns because these are also a part of the program. <clears throat> As you can see, it's divided into paragraph titles, 
segment titles, section titles, and division titles. And so this area of the spreadsheet is where you put your information in, in and that from that, the program will then work out and create the boxes for that. Now, first thing you need to do is the references, where it says chapter and verse, one verse one, and then, that's already done for you, where it says first paragraph, this is where you type in your first paragraph for Ephesians. So mine was Paul to Saints in Ephesus. Okay, and then you don't have to put in chapter one again because the program knows that automatically, but you do need to put in the the next um, where the next a paragraph begins. In that, in our case, since we were combining the first two, this would be verse three, and then you put in the next one. Blessed us every spiritual blessing. Okay, and then the next paragraph, which begins at 11, and then the next paragraph title. Obtained inheritance. Spirit guarantee. And then the next paragraph, which begins at verse 15, and then you put in the next one. Prayers. No to which cause. And so on. Now, in this one, that is the final paragraph of that particular chapter. And so here you would put chapter 2, verse 1. And then you would then put the next one in there. But if you just leave it there, the program doesn't know how many verses are in that final paragraph. That's what D is for, column D. And this is the only time you use this. When you come to the end of a chapter, you put in the final verse of that chapter there, which would be verse 23, and then go on to the next one. So if you do that, obviously from the other ones, the program will work out that this, this paragraph is two verses, um, and this is nine because of that, and so on. But it doesn't know from there how big that paragraph is. Now it knows, and it can create the chart for you and then you would continue by putting in the first <coughs> paragraph title for chapter two. Please use your own paragraph for this, not just mine. And then you would continue doing that all the way down until you had all the references down here, and then all the paragraph titles down there. Now, I'm not going to do that. That would take a long time for me to do that. So I'm going to one I had prepared earlier. And so you see, these are all my references. I don't know why it says chapter one, though it's not, so I'm going to get rid of that. Something went wrong at some point. Me a moment. I did this to save time and then realized it's not saving time. Okay, I apologize about that. <clears throat> and then, so after you have put in your references, uh, the paragraph titles, their final, remember, remember to put in the final verse reference for each of the final paragraphs of the chapter. Then you move on to the second column, the next column, column E, which is segment titles. 
And for this one, I'm just going to put these here for a moment so I can have them on the screen at the same time. What you would then do is put in your segment title, which you've got from your rough horizontal, in the segment title section. And you do this, you put it in, in the first paragraph of that segment. So in this case, one verse one is the first one. So my title was God's plan, inheritance in Christ. And then you put in the second segment title at the first paragraph of the next segment. So that would be 2 verse 1 here. God's reconciliation united in Christ. And then again, the next paragraph, next segment, sorry. God's mystery, Gentiles in Christ. And then the next segment is 4 verse 1. The body walking as one. And then one paragraph, one segment for mine there. So straight on to the next one. Walking as children of light. And then the next one is 522. Families in Christ. And then the final one in 610. Stand and pray. So you see, each of those segments you put it in the first paragraph of that segment. So those are the breaks, if you remember, from the other list that we did. Okay, and then you would do the same for the section titles. As you can see over here, these are my section titles for the book. So you would put them next to the first segment of each section. And that, again, would be... Um, God's plan, that original, that first one. So, the church in Christ. And then, the next section, the second section, you would put in this column next to the first segment of it, So, the, which is, would be the body walking as one, as you can see here. Christ in the church. And again, you'd be putting your own titles, your own segment titles, your own section titles in there, not necessarily mine. So basically what we've done is taken this rough horizontal we've created and put that information into this program. Now from all the other books you do in the school, you won't be making this kind of list and dividing up yourself, and that's of course you want to, you will be doing it in this page. So this would be, you'd have your Bible open, and when you get to do your paragraph titles, you would write your paragraph title for the first time in here. So it won't be copying from another place you've written. You would do the work in this program. And then the same with segment titles as you divide it up here. So this will be your um, workbook, if you like. Okay, let's make that big again. So that's all the information at this stage that you're going to put um, into the horizontal chart. Um, just as a, as a point when it comes to smaller and bigger books, a smaller book like Ephesians, for this part, for the in, all the, the data you put in, you're only going to put in paragraph title, segment title, section title. The reason this is because if you put in a division title in here, the program will think that this is a large book because only usually large books have this extra division. 
And if it thinks it's a large book, in the finished horizontal, it will not include all of your paragraph titles. Because obviously in a large book, there will be so many paragraph titles, you won't be able to see them in any finished horizontal chart. So when it comes to a small book like this, don't put anything in this column. Because that will otherwise, otherwise that will wipe out this column. Um, but again, if you have any questions about that, please ask me when we come to a bigger book. Okay, so that's all the information we need to put in there. So the next thing you do is create a horizontal. And to do that, you press this little red button here. And if I've done this all correctly, I just need to press that. And this magical thing happens. And there you have created a horizontal for Ephesians. Okay. Now, if I just blow that up a little, you can see there's, a one, there's one or two issues in there because um, some of the paragraphs are very small. As you can see, I haven't com in this list, I haven't combined the first two like you have, so they're very tiny. And this one is small, and this one is small. But you need to do some kind of adjustment to the finished horizontal to make it look okay. Um, so the best, so you just click on there, and the easiest way to do this is just to mess around, whoops, with these until you, oh, there you can see that, but it's still a bit big, and just make it smaller, and then you can see it. It's obviously going to be smaller than the rest, but you can at least see it now. And uh, you would do the same for the references as well. Now, obviously, this is only going to, you're only going to do something like this if you happen to have a book where you have one or two very, very small paragraphs, which are one or two verses long. This is most of the time, as you can see along here, there's not really a problem. It's just for these. these smaller paragraphs. There we go. Almost done. And then these final two here. Okay. Now, because this is all in proportion to each other, so you can see how large each segment is and compared to each other, you can see that this is a relatively small segment, yet this one here is rather large. We don't want to mess around with the column width, so do not make these or these or these wider. But it's very safe to make them wide in this sense. So if you wanted to make them bigger, sometimes, for example, you may not see all of your title, so you might need to make these bigger. That's, that's something you can do with these to just to make them look a little better. Um, then another thing you need to do is put the key verse in. So that's where you would put the key verse, where it says key verse of one. 9 to 10, which I can't remember off the top of my head, so you'll take that as that would be the key verse. Um, also, book. You put that in there, Ephesians. Um, and then your book title. Um, what was mine again? The church. Body United Christ, something like that. Uh, um, so, of course, what you could do um, is just mess around with this a little. So, we talked about not having divisions um, in other ones. If you wanted to have another layer here or another layer here, which you will do on some books, but you 
don't want to put it in here because you don't want to mess up the workings of the program, you can do this. So for example, you can um, take these, let's see what I did, that's it, take those, and then um, oh, sorry, up here. Sorry. You can merge these and then give them borders, and then this then could be a new place where you could put any sort of information. <laughs> the first two chapters. In that case, not very useful information, but there may be something about those two chapters that you want to put together and add extra information to your horizontal chart. Or like I said, if you wanted to put an extra layout here, an extra more division, um, you, it won't work on this because you've already got two. But if you wanted to do that, you can add an extra row and then play around a bit like that um, just to make add extra information to uh, to your horizontal or extra levels if you need it. So this would be the place you do it rather than here because that, like I say, will mess around with the programming. Um, for example, one thing you might want to do, you might not like to have the title up here on its own. You might want the title to be a part of the actual chart. So you could merge all of these together create boundaries, um, borders for it, and then write the church, the body, united Christ in here so it was a part of the chart. Um, there's lots of ways you can do that. Um, <clears throat> the particular font they choose is one which is thin so it fits into these spaces. But if you wanted to use a different font, you could, of course, change the font. You could change the color. You could do shading. You could do all sorts of things um, after you've after the program has created like the basic structure for you, you could then play with it a little more, add to it, change the color, all sorts of things. Okay. Um, so I think that is all for creating a horizontal. Um, I'm going to make another video where you can, how you can from this create verticals, but this is just going to be focused on the horizontal. And so if, again, if you have any questions about this process, you can watch the video again or ask me again or watch Dealer's video on, on the website or re, read the README files, that will help you too. Um, but there's lots of things, that gives, it gives you a basic structure that then you can play around with it and make it your own.